April the 22nd, 2025. Guys, if your ears are ringing and you're dizzy, this is why we've been talking about it for quite a while now. And I really appreciate all the comments in the video yesterday about the DNA and our son. I think that's a, a very good uh, base point for us to continue that study. I think it's very important, probably one of the most important studies of our lives because of it. We're talking about our souls and our eternal life, aren't we? Anyway, this is what we talked about, one of the largest coronal holes ever observed by the Solar Dynamics Observatory is back on the Earth-facing position. Check that out. It says, comparing it to when it was last facing our planet, you know, rotates, guys, back on March 25th through the 28th, the northern extension towards the solar equator has shrunk. That's that point you see right here. Now, it's kind of closed because it was opening towards the northern hemisphere. It says the northern extension towards the solar equator has shrunk while the zone stretching across the wide swath of the southern hemisphere has grown. And guys, I've said it many times. If you look at the, a flat plane of the planets and the sun, the earth is not in that plane. It's below it. So we're more affected by the southern hemisphere events on the sun than we are the northern. All of them affect us, but we are below the equator of the sun. It says from one end to the other, it measures nearly 700,000 kilometers. Active to moderate G2 geomagnetic storm conditions remain in the forecast for the next 48 to 72 hours once the high-speed solar wind reaches Earth. Now, this was put out this morning, but the wind has already hit us now. And again, if you're dizzy, uh, your ears are ringing, this is why. Now, let's take a look at the current sunspots also. They are Earth-facing. 4064 is the most uh, dangerous in the sense that we have multiple magnetic configurations, a positive and a negative, in the blue and the red. And when they arc over, even though this is more in the northern hemisphere above the equator, we still get the effect. But this area below this is where this large coronal hole is. See this opening right there? But So we've got kind of double things we got to watch for. 4068 may come into play in the next few days. We saw, this is the one, guys, that we saw a lot of activity from just a few days ago. If we look back seven days, you can see the breaks in the solar flares themselves. Here on the 16th, guys, this was the day from hell If you, to me. I hope today doesn't increase in intensity as bad as that day was, but it has not started out that that good as far as the effects but it goes back to what we talked about last night again I accepting these changes or not we're going to talk about that in another video more but here you're seeing that we've had three flares this is the x line they're not x flares but it's from this the group that we're seeing turning towards us and the large one that's above the solar equator could kick out a stronger flare than this. And what these flares do, they're not as impactful, unless there's a bunch of them that build up consistent pressure on the Earth's uh, surface and the tectonic plates, but they add to the energy inside the solar wind stream. This is our three-day chart, guys. You've got... Uh, Yesterday is in the center of it. If you look at the bottom, you can see from 0, 0,100 to 12, and then starts back at 0, 0,100. That's 24 hours. And then yesterday was the most active since the 16th, as far as this coronal opening, excuse me, as far as the opening in our magnetosphere. And when these red lines, called the BZ, drop south of this line, you see the purple background indications. Those are openings in our uh, shields. Right now, let's go to right now. It's not very open. You see that? Just a few dips, and that's a good thing. But if you look down below here, our solar wind speed is still very high, and it started yesterday. We're cruising around here, trying to get back to normal, which is around 320. Didn't quite make it. After we started seeing impacts from this coronal hole yesterday, look at the difference. Almost doubled the solar wind speed. And when you're dealing with 700s 
Because you're, again, you're over a million and a half miles per hour. And comparing this chart, guys, to the high pitch that I'm experiencing now, I have no doubt that it has something to do with it. I knew the moment uh, at, at daylight when I opened my eyes, the dizziness was, was there and uh, the fogginess and everything in this high pitch. So it, space weather is directly related to Earth's weather, which is directly related to your human body. Now let's take a look at the Earth-facing satellite called LASCO. This is the C2 lens. It gives us a close-up look. Timestamp at the bottom started on the 18th. Notice as we get into the 22nd that there's a couple of explosions in the last few frames. We don't have the data on that yet, but it, again, that type of of explosions, even they're not, even though they're not X flares, add to the energy that's coming towards our planet and adding to everything we've been talking about. Then watch the last few frames. I'll let it go back through one more time into the 22nd. 21st. Right here. Right there. So we'll see what that came from. It looks like possibly from the sunspot. So the one on the right may have been a filament release. We'll know more about it as the information comes in. Now the sun is very active. What you're looking at is this large coronal opening in the darker area and it's kind of behind it, but you got a sunspot right on its tail that's becoming active too. Notice that flare. And this is all in the southern hemisphere, which is also the earth is more prone to the southern hemisphere effects because of where it is in the ecliptic. Very large filament release right here, guys. This one will probably not affect the planet because it's going to launch off in the top left. But watch it come around. In the last frames, you'll see this side, that explosion we just saw. But that is a unbelievable image when you, com you talk about how big it is. Probably 200,000 kilometers in that loop itself. Think about that. This is 700,000 kilometers, this area of the coronal opening. But what is happening, guys, you've got a solid stream coming out, just like water on the overflowing dam almost, just pushing out. You close the gates, it shuts off the source there. But downstream, for a few days, you've got that flood coming. And that's what happens. Even when this thing turns around to the right, we have 93 million miles of outflow before it reaches our planet. And so that's what we're dealing with. So it's going to be continuous for the next 72 hours. Like I said, even though it's starting to move more to the right, the, or the eastern limb, that stream is continuing to pump out. Now, the gates have not been closed, but uh, it will. Uh, we will have these effects, I guess is the point of the video, for the next two or three days. Now, there's a loop that's magnificent in size right here, probably 200,000 kilometers in size, that loop right there. Look at that. Let me move out of the way. Watch it again. The last few frames, you'll see the explosion on the right side that we saw from the uh, Soho satellite, and you'll see a few others. But right here, this, bam, look at that. That arc is incredible, especially the energy that you see within it. Let's look at it one more time close up. Check this out. Look at this long filament. That's how they get released. This one didn't release, but see this arcing energy right there? You're, you're sparking between hot and negative, or positive and negative points, and that's what causes the explosions. Check that out. Now let me uh, bring this back just a moment. Let's get right to it right there. It ionizes the upper atmosphere of the sun, too. Look at this right there. Anyway, back it up right in there. A lot of energy. To me, just the size of it is amazing, but it it is just an indicator, guys, of the energy in the sun, and it looks like everywhere you look, things are starting to heat up. Just let me move this across. Look at the energy here from that departing sunspot that gave us that explosion. Guys, we're watching this, working on a couple of other videos that I've mentioned before. One is the cities beneath the earth, why they're there, how it turns, how it has to do with the 
uh, again, Younger Dryas, the last ice age, and the cycles, and where we are at in the cycles of that occurrence. It's a heads up, guys. Be safe.